legend. Yeah, he's done everything. Everything. We're talking a lad who 32 years did all the music for WWE. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking E. Whatever about E. WWE. There's full documentaries about him as well. Full documentaries. Yeah, I watched a few. For, this is the one I wanted to... I wanted to get a bit you of juice. You love that piece of music. I just... I, yeah. It's absolute synthwave. You're forever talking about it's it. It's synthwave. You love it. It's just... I play this all the time. Someone goes, play some WWF move. They, they, know, they think I'm going to play Sexy Boy. They think I'm going to play Real American. They might think I might play... Stone which, Cold or something. Well, Stone Cold, is, he did that as well. That, but, was, yeah. that was one of his first biggest, you know, yeah. most... One, people go, well, hang on, what's his name? Yeah. But he... Um, Jim Johnson is the man behind everything musically WW, let's just say E, yeah. did. He did the entrance music from the start. The first piece of music he ever did was for WrestleMania. Okay. And it was a jazz sax piece. Weird. So that's what we're talking 80s. Yeah. Um, he did all the video games. He did the end when you log on to, in the 2000s, log on to the website mm. and it has his own music. He was just like, he, that was his career. Yeah. I remember watching a little documentary about that. He had a tiny little studio and he, it was just him. I think he might have had an assistant engineer, like a little production assistant. And uh, it was just full of fucking instruments. Yeah. Just instruments everywhere. Yeah. And he'd just grab a bass guitar. Imagine being that. Imagine being a composer that could do it. Well, that's what they need. You need, I don't you think need he's to be there anymore. No, we'll get I into think, that now in a minute. Yeah. yeah, there was a bit... That's kind of sad, but inevitable. Was, well, I think what happened What happened with WWF into WWE, the changeover, was... Um, I think a lot of the wrestlers wanted like famous theme songs like no one did music. but the gas thing was he was also a really good curator even oh, yeah, then yeah. in the Raw era because yeah. he brought in the Motorhead yeah. and uh, the, the the band that did Walls of Jericho and stuff like yeah. that he was okay with that if they said that that's what they wanted yeah. he would find the one for them yeah. and if they wanted it he would just let it happen exactly he would never step in and go well, you know yeah, cause I think what happened was Vince McMahon didn't want to pay license and fees for a lot of that, load of that music so they would yeah. often come the, up with yeah, little like something alike. Now, can you imagine? I would imagine in my head if, let's say, someone wanted the Motorhead song, yeah. someone wanted the game. Well, who was the game? Uh, Motorhead, uh, Triple H. Triple H. Yeah. Now, what a song! He went. It's it's fantastic. They would probably go right. Well, you have to pay for that through yeah. your contract. Yeah, slowly, incrementally. And Triple over H's gonna thing. go. Nah, no. But I, I would say Vince McMahon, being the businessman that he is, went. But but. Like, you're going to pay for that. If Jim Johnson, if I can get Jim Johnson to do this for a fiver. Time to hide the shame. For, for, yeah, exactly. For, <laughs> go, yeah. Yeah, he would do, like, he would be out completely open to that and stuff like that. And he would, you know, he, he, the music producer of, of everything, he would absolutely do everything involved that they wanted. He to had do. all the control. And yeah. that was his, that's a great gig to have for 32 years. Now, in 2014, first of all, I will say this. I'm very, very happy that Jim Johnson is such a big fan of guitars and synths. Yes. Because it, he he really structured the music to the character really, really well. He and was very good at the identity at the end of it. Yeah. And we're talking about no lyrics. He can't yeah. go, he's the man from the unknown. Yeah. He did the, the ultimate, man from the unknown. The, the ultimate they warriors. They call him the Undertaker. Of, yeah. I mean, he didn't have to be, he couldn't vocally say yeah. this. He had to musically yeah. do this for mm. a character. And that is recording, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, I, I, I accidentally hit something there. Oi, me. listen, let's be honest. I went for the slash. And Helmet didn't. And Helmet didn't. And while I was gone, Helmet tried to record a little secret message. And I fucked it up. I made a bollocks of it. And I, I, almost, I, will, I almost recorded over what I'm considering one of my favourite podcasts. Yeah, right you went back to the start and nearly hit record again. <laughs> nearly recorded. What I will say I about that. recorded over the whole What I will say about that slash, that slash hurt me. That was one of them pain. Really? I still have the echoes of pain inside me. Yeah. This is, this is two podcasts in a row where you've taken 100% more pisses than I have. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Yeah. Um, That's so, because your fucking kidneys are failing though. After all the pisses you took in the last couple of months. Yeah, maybe I just have no... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just it's falling out of my eyes and arse now. I'm bleeding out of yeah. the eyes. Um, Red piss is normal, isn't it? A classic example is Stone Cold and Ultimate Warrior. Mm. I c- you can't imagine any other fucking song for them. Absolutely not. Especially Ultimate Warrior. So he literally crafted... Vince McMahon would come to him. He, he said this. Vince McMahon would come with a couple of ideas yeah. of who this character... Hector Crazy. Before, before they were even mm. fleshed out. And he would get nail it. Now he said a couple of times he got it wrong, and Vince McMahon went, "No, that's not right." He did Vince McMahon's team, for yeah. fuck's sake. Um, but in 2014, CFOS, uh, CFO uh, dollar symbol are the guys that took over responsibility mm. for creating the entrance team and the musical for content. Now he wasn't fired in 2014; um, he was kept on. But even he admits his role was drastically reduced yeah, in yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. 
Um, and that's kind of sad. That's when you're talking about they're bringing in big names. Yeah. And now, I'm going to call them CFOS. I don't know how you pronounce CFO dollar sign. Oh, whatever. Okay. They have some bangers. Mm. Uh, specifically, Finn Balor's one yeah. is absolutely so good. Yeah. But that draws off Jim Johnson's yeah, music of absolutely. And but that's and the basis of it. Yeah. And they're respectful and of the legacy of that. Um, two years ago, in 2017, he was officially let go. Oh, really? Yeah, released from his contract. 32 years with a company. Um, I will say this. It's the longest career you'll see in WWE. By and, far. And he left without uh, a broken body. Yeah. Him um, and the Undertaker, that's it. <laughs> that's yeah. fucking it. <laughs> left, left with uh, addictions and yeah. broken, broken spines. And fucking Undertaker's had a, a bajillion fucking theme songs as well. Like. Yeah. He did that one as well. The yeah. Incredible team mm. song. Incredible. Um, he gave his entire career to one network and to one idea and to one company. To be fair, I'm sure he made a few quid out of it. Well, no, absolutely. Is it? And even he admits that, you know, t- things, t- things come to an end. Of course they And do. 22 years in that career is actually, for, for WWE... I'm sure he was getting on in years as well. Yeah, he said that uh, the, the last meeting he had, he knew it was coming because he was sitting around the office and the other lads were just doing the stuff yeah. he was still getting a paycheck but he said himself that he is a pr- prolific wor- you'd have to be a prolific worker big time working every, every day, day on everything, everything. he said it was just becoming sort of depressing um, the lads were doing everything and basically eventually he was called into the office and he knew it was coming and he was let go it's kind of sad it's time to go he, d- he isn't he isn't bitter about it he just feel it's still going to be sad no matter what someone retires it's very sad Um a funny story, because I, 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 I had to dig a bit deeper yeah. with Jim Johnson because I found a really, really good interview with him where he talks about when he was first learning piano. The very first instrument he ever learned was piano, which is officially the best instrument to start yeah. on. I don't care what anyone says. The piano is the bass and lead yeah. at all time. You're playing the bass on the left and the yeah. lead on the right. Well, whatever way your fucking hands work, but not it is. Um, he said that he had a music teacher and every time after the music lesson he'd go home to his mother and go, I can't go back there. She's nuts. She's yeah. crazy. And, and they're like, no, nah, come on, James, stick with it, stick with it. Like, no, no, please, Matt, please don't send me back there. She's, she's a bad person. Mm. She's, she's not right in the head. She's really, really rough and hard on me, and it's really tough. And uh, eventually the man went, fine, right, fine. You don't have to go back anymore. And two weeks later, he said, they were watching the news, and the music teacher had burnt her own house down and hung herself on the tree behind the house while watching the house born. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. How what the fuck? And the man was like, yeah, Jim, sorry about that. Yeah, you're yeah. probably right about her. Uh, Let's find you a new one, son. Uh, there's no real uh, count on how many pieces of music he's done, but by the uh, the music, uh, the people that count who gets paid musically, yeah. they have counted almost... 10,000 pieces of Fuck. music he's written for WWE. Fuck. This includes teams, incidental music, yeah. website music like we talked yeah. about, promos, yeah. everything that... W- w- go to Jim. Yeah. Jim's going to do it. Yeah. Jim, nearly 10,000. So you're right about the Sweet do Jesus. thing. Um, he's an absolute legend in the music business. I'm not going... In the music business of, of WWE, yeah. but to me, I still listen to those songs in playlists that oh, are yeah. to do with synthwave, mm. rock, they're not even to do with wrestling. Yeah. For and an they, in-house guy, like. An in-house guy. Jesus. He was just, the workload was, uh, so it must have been a bit, well, the new guys had to come along and do, uh, but the thing I will say about the CFOS or the new guys, whatever they're called, they don't really match the music as well to the characters. It's more to do with what's popular in the charts a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. So you're mixing a lot of hip-hop in there. We didn't have, yeah. we had some scratching and, and kind of hip hop There's also, there's music, they put music out, I think like Samoa Joe's music is atrocious. It doesn't suit him whatsoever. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't quite hit the mark as, as much as Jim Johnson's would. I will say that um, Phil Ballard's one, Finn Ballard's one, is nailed on. Yeah, yeah. The Irish guy from yeah, yeah. Uh, Bray. Shinsei is one that's fucking savage with the violin as well. Yeah. No, listen, they're great, but he got phased out. But after twenty-two years, not bad. Yeah, not bad. Going from the eighties up until then, and like I said, the the company itself has no problem literally killing someone off. Oh, Listen, you're Cutting dealing with absolute animals scum. in that they're scum. They will, they will end your career in your hometown. Yeah. yeah. The closest business, I've been saying this for years because I was involved with the uh, pro wrestling business for years as well. And um, Little Billy Corgan heading you doing music and yeah, wrestling. Woohoo! Yeah. Um, I was actually supposed to do music for uh, 
pr- uh, promotion as well. Um, never worked out. But um, I was involved in wrestling for years. Um, a company called Irish Whip Wrestling. Um, there were three of us involved in it. We uh, ran shows and brought people over. And I, en- I ended up uh, speaking of Jake the Snake. I went drinking with Jake the Snake. Um, yeah, the, 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 yeah. The, I was going to talk about Jake the Snake, but yeah. I felt like Jim Johnson would be a better yeah, person to yeah, talk yeah, about for yeah. this one. Yeah. Um, this was this would have been pre uh, Jake starting his life out. He was still very much. And that rack. documentary is phenomenal. Yeah. What's yeah. the name of uh, reinventing um, this? Uh, no oh, shit. Um, re oh fuck. Jesus. When you watched it a while ago. My God, I know the name yeah. of this. Fuck you, wine. Why do you delete major foils in mid podcast? Is, is it called Resurrecting Jake the Snake? Resurrecting Jake yeah, the Snake, yeah. surely, yeah. And it's about uh, Diamond Dallas Page and his. Who is a program. fucking stellar guy. Yeah, yeah. So I, I always enjoy it, uh, DDP's work way back in the day. Yeah. Um, he, he was one of those guys who gave everybody hope because he, he only got into wrestling in his late 30s. Jake the Snake did? No, no, fucking. Jake I the was Snake, like, fuck no. off. Jake the Snake, Jake is a uh, second generation. His father was a wrestler as well. DDP only got into it in the same only th- Jake the Snake was my favourite from the Me very too. start. Me too. The only problem I have now looking back is you shouldn't be doing that with snakes. Yeah, but that was one of the problems we had when we had him over as well. He was, wasn't very nice towards a snake we had borrowed. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I'm not into that. Yeah, there was I'm not into uh, animals being used in time, which is why I will never go to a circus or yeah, realistically a, a small zoo. I don't, yeah. I'm not into them. Um, um, yeah, he, yeah. Was, he wasn't particularly uh, pleasant towards the snake when we had him. Now, again, this is when he was Because when, when you look back, it's hard to watch yeah. the bag. Yeah. He's thrown it around. Yeah. It, it actually it hurts me. It, yeah. I'm not into it. Well, that, yeah. apparently that was one of the reasons he lived in England for years. Um, yeah. He had like animal abuse charges and fucking people abuse charges and he owed money to everybody. He's not one of people. That's his job. Well, yeah. Yeah, but like outside of the ring, yeah. it's just, uh, it's yeah. just yeah. not That's just the one small black mark I have on this whole thing and yeah. I have to mention it because it's... Um, we, we, whatever about our podcast, we always talk about the things we are not of course. comfortable about. Yeah, but like uh, as I was saying, the closest thing to pro wrestling in the world is pornography. It's the the, yeah. the the way it treats its talent. You're probably right. Is yeah. almost identical. You know, you get used up, chewed up, and spat out. Spat out. Yeah. And um, if, if you if you don't keep the pressure, and up there and is wrestling stay, porn as well. There is, but if you don't keep, you know, like, if you don't stay, right I wasn't on talking the about cusp, China. Yeah, if you don't keep on the cusp of like what people want. Yeah. And kind of pushing boundaries and like being the number one person and, and the funny thing fucked. is th- th- these guys are going into meetings with marketing guys and trying to fight their corner and if you see your marketing guys fucking up your career yeah. well, what the fuck like you have to well, the, th- the thing about wrestling wrestling in the 80s is that the guys had a little bit more they, they used to call it reaching for the brass ring you know so it would be they had a little bit more wiggle room in that uh a lot of them would have been seasoned to begin with before they ever got to WWF, so they would have known what to do. Now, WWE and a lot of these companies are just factories, so they have the training skills, um, they have uh, the teachers, and they have script writers. So all you have to be is a really good athlete. They will teach you how to do the moves and how to put a match together, and you're handed a script of what to say in front of the camera. Well, back in the 80s and the early to mid-90s, it was very much off your own back. You might have been given points to talk about. Make sure you talk about the upcoming gig in Madison Square Gardens. Make sure yeah. you mention this guy that you're going up against. Uh, you're going to you're fighting Don't for this Don't say the N word when you're talking about fucking uh, Hulk Hogan. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So they were, they, these people were given more leeway to uh, kind of get themselves across. But now yeah. they're just, they're blank slates. Build oh, a, they are. Smackdown build the wrestlers yeah, is what they are. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they're like, okay, you're Sweet. the clown now. Yeah. Uh, or you're the void king. You're yeah. a Viking. Okay, so here's a Viking helmet. We've got this fucking trumpety fucking bomb, 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 bomb music for you. Uh, you go out, you only talk about... Uh, Despite getting famous off a completely different self-made career. Yeah. We're blanking that. Yeah, because Do you know why we can't do that? Because we can't uh, market what you've already done because you own that. Yeah. Same with Finn Balor. Yeah. Was possibly a millionaire? I, I, he had a few quid from Japan, all right, yeah? Has to be a millionaire yeah. before. I have, a, I have a funny story about Finn Balor. When they... Uh, so when we, we had an Irish whip wrestling, we were thinking about opening a wrestling school in right. Dublin. So we were viewing locations and we were talking to trainers and all this kind of showing. At the time, he, him and a friend of his had opened up a wrestling school in Bray. Yeah. Right? So they got that a... That included um, the Irish girl, uh, fucking... Becky, yeah. Becky, yeah. I think so, so right? They opened up... Uh, there was a company in England called NWA Hammerlock, which is like an old... Like an old school fucking... Uh, old school promotion based in England and uh, <laughs> they went over and got they talked to NWA and said listen we're t- we want to open up a school in Ireland so they said well here's a ring you can be NWA Ireland or whatever it is Hammerlock Ireland 
and uh, we'll send over some trainers and uh, you can get the ball rolling.